What's up everyone? Welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm gonna make Flappy Bird and I know that there are a ton of Flappy Bird tutorials on YouTube but I'm gonna do it without any line of code and we're gonna make the complete game from beginning until the end. So including of course all the main mechanics of Flappy Bird but also a moving background with a nice parallax effect, a score counter which also is able to make a high score in the main menu Talking about the main menu, we're also going to make this one. We're going to add some music and also all the sound effects and particle effects to make one complete game. And at the end of this one hour, if you follow along full way, you can publish Flappy Bird on any platform which you like. So let's get right into it. All right, so within the Unity Hub, let's make a new project. Um, with the latest version of Unity, let's make it 2D and let's call it Flappy Bird. All right, once Unity is started up, let's go to the Packet Man Manager, go to My Assets and install Playmaker, import it to uh, your game and then install it. If you haven't installed Playmaker before, please check out this video above. And also there's a separate video for the ecosystem. Please check those out above. I'm just gonna fast forward this now. All right, once Playmaker is installed, you will also have the Playmaker window there. You can add the Playmaker editor to here. Uh, no need to show this on the startup. Let's dock the Playmaker right there. And let's start making our game. To start off, let's just uh, change the name of the scene to game and then we will have another scene which will be called let's say the starting screen all right <clears throat> so within the main scene we have a camera let's change the size of this camera to 20. Um, the background color let's take a more lighter blue you know like a like kind of a blue background sky this looks good so in the game it looks like this all right so within the assets let's create a folder and uh, let's call this um, building blocks or building material or whatever you like. And here are the assets which you can download in the description below, which we will use to make the whole game. Once you've got the assets imported, let's start by importing our bed. And what we're going to do is just select them all and drag them in. And there's a new animation which will be triggered then flying flying bat. I mean, it's actually a bird, but uh, who cares, right? <laughs> and what we're gonna do, we gotta first of all reset the transform and let's call this the, we can call this the bird or bat, whichever you like. Um, it's a bat in this case. We're gonna flip the X, X, the X because it's facing that way. The pipes will come from here. And now you can see here it's, here's the, the enemy. Let's put the X uh, minus 22. So it's a little bit at this side of the screen. And now let's add a couple more components. First of all, the animator should be animating. So if you now press play, you can see it's flying. It's a little bit slow though. And we can easily change this by going into the animator and just uh, multiplying the speed. And I'm just gonna put a tree. And now the bat will be flying three times faster with its wings, which gives a better effect. All right, let's go back to the bed. And we're gonna add a couple of things here. The animator should be selected. This is all right. And let's add a couple components. First of all, we're gonna add a rigid body, rigid body 2D. Uh, mass one is fine, but let's have a higher gravity scale because the flappy bird will always fall right, quite fast. Um, continuous collision detection. Let's add a circle collider 2D which is a trigger and let's make sure that it's, let's say on top of our player character. Talking about player character, this one should have a tag of player and we need a couple more tags later um, of the enemy. And we also need a tag of score, so scoring points. These are the tags. Uh, text we have. We don't need any layers. This is fine. We will just put this one on the layer default zero. This is fine. After adding those components, let, let's add the first FSM and let's call this FSM flying. 
So the first FSM is just flying state is input. And the input is get key down. And the key which we want is have is space here. Great. Then we add a transition, finish, and also select it here, finish. And then what we're going to do is add velocity here. Velocity. So a velocity upwards. The thing is what we're going to do, we're only going to move this character up and down, and we're going to move the background from right to left. And also the, the enemies are coming from right to left. So what we're going to do, because it keeps falling because of the high gravity skill, we're first going to set the velocity, um, set velocity 2D. And we're going to just zero this out and we're going to, the Y, we're going to set to zero. There we go. Then we're going to add, add force 2D. And here we're going to also go to the Y and let's add 1200 force. This sounds about right. We will check it later if it's correct. And what we also want to do is play a random sound. And play random sound is a quite a cool feature. Let's go to the building blocks. I've got some sounds. I've got the flapping sound. Always lock this so we know that we're working there. And then I'm just going to drag in flap one, flap two, and flap three, which are like the, let's say the flapping sound of um, our bat once it's uh, flying up. And then right away, let's add a finish and let's go back. So you can just keep on hitting space and it will go up, up, up. Great. Right, that's the first FSM. Let's press lock again and let's add another FSM and let's call this one score point. We already got to set this up, score point. Um, sorry, the FSM name should be score point. And the state should be trigger. And we're going to add a simple trigger to the event trigger to the event and the collider tag should be score and once it scores it should be finished and then we're going to add one state here by pressing ctrl and dragging the arrow you can add states like that so please use that and let's here call this one score point and what we're going to add here is first of all we're going to play a sound again because it's always nice if you have a sound to score points and let's uh, add here the score great and then we're going to send event and what we're going to do we're going to send an event to a game object and we're going to send it to the score manager and always let's reset this one and call this score manager manager i need to learn to spell and let's add an fsm here and call this also score manager there we go i'm just going to leave that there for now and here we are going to specify the game object we're going to drag in the score manager and the fsm is also score manager and we're going to send a new global event which is called add point That's okay, that message always shows up when you make a new project, that is fine. And then we're going to wait, not a random wait, sorry, normal wait. Let's delete the random wait here and wait one and then we finish. We're going to add the transition, finish, pull it back. There we go, we're going to work on the score manager in a bit, but first let's do this. Now let's add a final FSM and let's call this one uh, game over. And the first one is trigger, because we're gonna trigger again, trigger to the event. And this time, once you hit an enemy, then we're going to send an event, and this event is just finished. And then we're gonna make a new state, and this one is then the die state. And let's add here then First of all, we want to perhaps have a particle effect. So let's create an object. And we haven't made this particle effect yet. Let's make that in a minute. Let's also earn the spawn point should be the bat, of course. We can already add that. Let's make the particle system in a second. We're gonna play a sound. 
and the sound is die. And then we're going to destroy a component because I just don't want to show this, um, let's say, the, the pet anymore. And what we're going to do is use owner and the component is um, Unity Engine and it's then the sprite renderer. So let's search that really quick. Sprite render, because that's this one. So this one we're going to just destroy. Good, let's make a particle system really quick and make a prefab. So let's make here a new folder, create folder. Oops, didn't get it. Create folder, please. Prefabs, because we're gonna make a couple of prefabs, not so many, but let's first go here and let's get an effect particle system. Um, always let's just reset it in the middle and let's set it up really quickly. Let's not loop it um, lifetime between two, uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.5, um, start speed also between two constants. And uh, this one, let's do 30 and 40. So it will be, will be bigger. The size should also be, let's say small to big, 0 0.2 uh, to two, sounds good. Um, the other topic, start color, two colors. Let's also random between two colors. We can also do a color gradient, but let's just take here, whoops, the blue color and perhaps a little bit the purple, purplish color or the yellowish color on how the, let's say, character is looking. You can also just click here and then take that color if you like. There we go. Um, then we're going to go to emission, uh, remove this over time. Let's add a burst and the burst, let's do 200. Let's go to shape and let's do sphere. And now you can see you have like this burst of particles, which is nice. Let's go over color over lifetime. Let's click it and let's just make sure that the alpha slowly goes down so the particles disappear over time. That's great. And let's also do collisions on. And here we pick world and we pick 2D world. So it collides then with, let's say, the pipes, which will be there later. Right? Let's uh, see how it looks. All right, it's hard to see now in the dark background, but let's uh, just go with it and let's call this particle system uh, dev. And just drag it into the prefabs. There we go. Delete it here. Go to the bed and let's drag it in. So we create this. That's good. Let's continue with the FSM. What we want to add here is a weight. So because we want to see a little bit what happened, wait, and then we go finish. Add the finish state by clicking there. Then we're going to the next one. And what we want to do when, um, let's say, the player dies is check if the score um, is the high score or not. So we will have always two scores, just the score of the game and the high score in the menu, just to track your high score. So let's call this check for high score. And what we're going to do is we go to variables and we're going to go to global variables and we're going to make two in variables. And the first one will be score. Great. And the second one will be high score. So now we have two variables added. Add, added, do you say added? I'm wondering. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a int compare here. And we're going to compare the score of the global with the high score. And let's say if it's equal, then we just go to the start screen and let's make a new event. Uh, Go start screen and let's add this. And if it's less than, we also go start screen. But if it's higher, we make a new event and we say update high score. And let's add this. And to go to the start screen, we just go here, 
go start screen. That's how what the state should be called. And what we're going to do is load scene. And we're just going to load the scene by index is zero. Currently, this game is zero, but we're going to make the start scene zero later in the build menu. So we will get there. Update high score. Let's go here. And here we're going to do set int value. And the variable should be now global high score. And we're going to set it with the score. Um, there we go. And we're just going to finish. And let's call this update high score. And then we go to the start screen. And then it will save, let's say, the high score in the start screen, which we will add later. Great. So with this said, already the bird is done. If we have a look now, or oh, actually before we have a look, let's add a simple game object again. Let's zero it is out. And perhaps we can also put it on uh, minus 22. That's good. And we're going to add component box collider is a trigger. And this one is enemy tag. And we're just going to drag it like this. And let's put it down here. So once our player character, let's say, hits the bottom here, it will be destroyed. And let's just add one more and do the same. Just going to put it here on the roof. So you're not allowed to fly out of bound. Otherwise, you would be able to fly over the enemy pipes, which we will make in a bit. And let's call this just the dev box. Uh, dev uh, corridors, whichever you like. And let's shortly check if we can fly now. So as you can see, it's flying and it's dropping quite fast. I can press harder. And you can also hear the sound, which is great. And once I hit the dev box at, let's say, the upper side, you hear the dev sound and you get the particle effect. Great, so that's working. Let's continue. So we want to add a couple more of uh, game objects here. Let's add one which is called background and always reset this. And let me just duplicate this one so I don't have to press reset again. And let's call this one um, pipe spawner. And the pipe spawner we're going to put on 40. So here it will spawn, let's say, the pipes which will enter uh, the area and talking about pipes let's make this and let's also duplicate just the background so it's on the same area and let's call this enemy enemy pipe <laughs> because the pipes are the enemy and let's tag this one to score and this is going to be a little bit interesting because what we're going to do is we're going to add a pipe here there we go and this pipe will be enemy so the enemy main pipe is score point because in the middle we will put a box collider and the other pipe will be let's say the uh, the death zone and what we're going to do is we're going to call this one let's say pipe down and let's first make finish one what we're going to do let's scale them up a little bit um, let's put them on a position of minus 18. there we go Add a component, a box collider is a trigger. And that looks actually quite good to me. Actually, uh, there it is, yes. That looks good. You can change it a little bit if you want, but that is fine. And now it's tagged enemy. So once I hit the pipe, uh, it will, let's say, destroy me. What we're gonna do is now is duplicate this one and let's call this one pipe um, up. And let's just put this one in 18. And what we're going to do in a sprite render, we're just going to flip. So and here you have now, let's say, your little gap in which you have to fly in. And this is now the enemy pipe. But of course, currently the pipe is just standing there. And our character, our player, will also just stay here. So we have to make the pipe move. But before we make it move to, the, to let's say, the player, what I want to do is add here also an other box collider. And this one is also a trigger because this is the score trigger. 
and we can just drag it up here and we can just leave it there in the middle and once let's say the player hits this area you will score a point great so now let's go to the enemy pipe and add a fsm so let's add the fsm here and then let's call this one move to player and this one is pr quite simple and it's actually a great one so we're going to use move towards and there is a nice action for this which is called moved towards and what we're going to do is we're just going to set a target position somewhere here and let's say minus 50 so you can see it already puts an arrow here so we know it wants to go here and what we want to do is ignore verticals as well and what this does is even if i go up it won't move let's say like this but it will move in a straight line and talking about oops talking about going up we can also see here the pipe um, let's say what is our highest level um, of the pipes so it should be let's say something like maybe 10 and minus 10 so to have the pipe spawned later randomly so anyway so let's um, move towards and what we're going to do once the pipes reach here we're going to send a finish event and let's add a transition here finished let's press here finished um, speed 10 sounds fine we can test this later and you can change this however you see fit and here we're just going to destroy object destroy self destroy object or destroy self all right and what we're going to do now is make a prefab out of this pipe so let's drag it into prefab there we go and we can delete it here and in the pipe spawner which is here just an empty object we're going to add an fsm and let's call this one spawn pipes and let's go to the first state which is just create pipe or enemy pipe whichever you like and what we're going to do is first of all we're going to add a random float random float with minus 10 and plus 10 and now you might think hey why are you adding a minus float and uh, this is actually because i showed you earlier i want the pipes to spawn between minus 10 and plus 10 and we're going to store the result in y position there we go this we will have to save in a set factor 3 xyz and let's make sure that the order is correct so first we get the random then we set the factor x y 3 and the variable will be a new variable which is let's say spawn um, pipe spawn location or position sorry there and here the y is the y position of the random float then we add one more action which is create object because once i've got the random float it's set in the factor tree and then i'm going to create a position so put this also in the end always put it in the right order and the game object oh for good practice you should always press your lock and the prefab is enemy pipe the spawn location is let's see the pipe spawner but the position offset is pipe spawn position great and now we're going to add a weight and the weight determines how many pipes you're going to spawn and let's spawn one every 2.5 seconds and then i'm just going to add a finish finish and what i'm going to do i'm just going to redirect it back to myself so just make a circle so it will keep on spawning pipes if we see now this now in action we already came quite far let's have a short look and you can see the pipes are coming and there is the score sound and i die when i hit the pipe that's already great this is already actually flappy bird uh, you're pretty much done 
But let's make it cooler, as I promised at the beginning. Let's add a background, a scrolling background, a main menu, and of course the score, because we made a score manager earlier as well, which we still need to finish. So let's work on those. So let's first finish the score manager. Uh, we already made the score manager in the start. And what we want to do here, let's call this just the idle state. And here we're going to set int value of the global score to zero because at every start of each game, I want to have the score zero. And now we can press here a right mouse button, add global transition, custom event, add point. This one we made earlier, if you remember correctly. And add point, uh, first of all, call this add point. And what we're going to do is int add, or, yeah, int add and global score at one great at a transition finished and here we want to update score but before we make that let's first make the score we can lock this in so we can come back here later easily let's go to the playmaker uh, user interface go here um, and then let's go to ui and let's add a text so it automatically adds the canvas and in text, press F to focus. Let's zoom out a little bit. Let's drag this to, let's say the upper corner here. Also make sure that this is centered there, or let's say in the upper right left corner. So in any screen resolution, it will be changed then. Um, the text should just be zero for now. Color, let's make it white. Always make the horizontal overflow, vertical overflow. And now let's say make the font size 50 so we can actually see something. Perhaps let's make it bold there. And let's call this the, the score count. And let's perhaps drag this a little bit here. Oops, score count there. I'm just going to control D duplicate this and call this score and let's also just call this score just a text score perhaps let's put this above that one there something like this and in the game you will have now here a score we can perhaps drag them both a little bit higher in the upper corner there we go um i have this what i'm gonna do is also add ui a image there we go whoops not sure why it's uh, let's just reset this for one second and i'm just gonna drag in this background yellow and you don't have to do this i mean set native size um okay we should scale it down a little bit to make it fit anyway let's just drag it here and always put this on top that's the order. And let's just have it like this, something like this. And of course, make sure that it's also anchored to the upper right. And that's called just the background. So we can read the score. This is optional. This is just cosmetics. There we go. So now let's update the score. What we're going to do is we're going to convert the int, which we had before the integer, into a string value and the string you can add here is a text and what we're going to do is get the global score and let's make a new variable and let's call it score string yes and then we have to ui text set text ui text set text action and of course we have to bring this here to the bottom and what we're going to do is specify the owner. It's locked, very good. The score count, which is, let's say, the zero here. And we're going to use the variable of the score string. There's now the text. And we don't want to reset anything. Every time a point comes in, it just stops there and it's done. So at this point, you will already start counting the score. Great. Now let's move on to the background. 
So now we have the blue background. So let's add there a little bit scenery. So we have here the background tab. And first of all, let's drag in the happy sun. The happy sun is always nice. And let's just drag it here up here. So we can see there a nice sun in the corner, which is always nice. It's actually up to you if you want to add this or not. And let's call this one minus 40 in the layer. And now we're going to add the background. And here we're going to make the main FSM. So we have a background here. Um, we have to scale this a little bit. Let's scale it 8. Whoops, not 88. 8. There we go. And let's put here minus 16. Actually, a little bit more, right? There we go. Something like this. And let's make this one, let's call this one bush. Bush close background. Because we're also going to put one behind it. There we go. Let's remove this lock of the Playmaker of the Score Manager. And let's go back here. So now we have here a nice background. I want this color to be a little bit darker. There. And in a bit you will see why. And now we're going to add a FSM, which is going to be very important. First of all, we're going to put this on the layer minus 10, so it's behind the pipes. And let's add a FSM. And the FSM is actually going to be similar to the pipes, but now I'm going to use a trick which I want to teach you on how we can just move the background and keep it moving, um, let's say, back and forth, so we don't need to make background all the time. I hope you understood that explanation. Let's say, let's call this move towards. And let's go here to the state. And what we're going to add is move towards. Great. And we're going to also move again towards the position. And let's call this minus 72. And ignore vertical because we only want to move vertical. And let's change the speed here to, let's say, 7. 7 sounds good. And let's call the state move towards. And what we're going to do is finish at the end so once you reach here and one second let me zoom out so once this one reaches here which is let's say out of the screen almost or pretty much out of the screen it will respawn here that's the idea all right so i'm just going to add here finish whoops and what i'm going to do is set position and here is just set position I'm going to set the X position here to 72, which is, let's say, absolutely opposite side, which is something like here. So let's do that. 72. And then I'm just going to finish and move it back. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to duplicate this one. Oops. Don't mess around with this one. So to keep that on 72, I'm just going to control D. And then I'm just going to drag this one here. And just going to put it like on minus 71.8. It doesn't really matter. As you can see, there's no overlap here. So I have now then two bushes. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these two. I'm going to duplicate them gonna put minus 20 and maybe make this one the lighter one I'm just gonna drag this up a little bit there we go and let's flip them on the X so it looks a little bit different and what we're going to do here is change the speed of this one to 5 and this one also to 5 and let's um, let's perhaps shortly test first of all how this will look as you can see the background is moving nicely with the game and what we should do now is just pause for a second let's not maximize on screen and then let's just go in the scene view and now we can actually see this in action 
So you see it, it respawns the background. It keeps respawning the pipes on different heights. Yes, higher, lower, and the background is respawning all the time, which is already a great effect if you ask me. Great, so let's pimp it a little bit more. Let's go to the scene. Let's um, just gonna get this one in front. Gonna copy them once more, and this one I'm gonna put in front, and I'm gonna make them dark, like something like this, really green dark. And I'm just gonna drag those down because I want to, there, let's like, say some. And also here, I'm just gonna change this again, the offset. And what I'm gonna do. We should have renamed this one, of course, this one Bush Far. So it's the far background, but it doesn't really matter, does it? But just for good sake, far background, and this is Bush in front. Front, this is not a background, is it? Let's just copy this. So there we go, Bush in front. And here, let's change the speed to let's make it fast. So you have really this feel of speed with those, whoops, not 120, that's too, too much, 112. There we go. Um, let's also add some clouds. And I'm just gonna do this very simple as well. I'm just gonna copy here too. I'm gonna drag them up. And what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna drag in the cloud here. There we go. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this a little bit transparent, something like this, there. And actually I'm just, I only want one. Now let's have the other one, cloud two, because I have different cloud pictures. There you go. Um, there, but what I have to make, sh make sure of that the speed is only two. And let's rename them to cloud, cloud. Two, and I'm just gonna copy one, call it cloud tree, and also drag in here cloud tree. The speed is all two, so it's not so fast. Um, let me just grab here cloud two once more and put this one perhaps here and this one we can perhaps put here. I'm just, oh, the transparency was away. So I didn't copy the one which was transparent. Let's add some transparency so the sun can actually uh, look through it. This is pretty nice. There we go, we have some clouds. We can also change the location a little bit. Let's add here also the transparency. Um, and let's also add this one here once more. So there we go. These are now the clouds in the background and everything is moving now. Oh, and one thing which we should make sure is the position of the cloud is now minus um, 20, which is the same like this one, which is fine because they don't interact with each other. There we go. Great, so that's the background set up. Let's have a short look how it looks now. So that's pretty nice. You can see the cloud is in front of the sun. I'm getting a score. The points are going up. Oops, but I'm just not very good at this game. And the background is moving along pretty well. As you can see, currently it doesn't load the main screen because it's not made yet, even though it's set up in the bed. So once I make the main screen and set it up in the build settings, we will move there. So let's add the main menu and some music to our game to finalize it. So let's make the main menu. Let's go to scenes. Um, make sure you save this, control S, and then I'm just gonna duplicate this one. And here I'm gonna rename this one to main menu. So I made an exact, exact copy of this game. Then I'm gonna go to build settings um, and let's drag in here the main menu. So the main menu should have zero and the game has one as an index. Great, and let's now go to the main menu. The main menu is exactly the same. And let's remove here, of course, the bed. Let's remove the dev box. And let's also move these, remove the score manager. And let's go in the Playmaker 
um, the canvas. Let's focus on that for a second. And the score should not be named to I. Oh, <laughs> not there. Um, let's go here. Yeah, we can call it actually high score. It's correct, but we have to change it here. Sorry, high score. And let's drag this then here so it's correct. And also the background, let's just make it that it fills it. There we go. And now we're going to add here uh, a couple of buttons. So this is the high score. And what we want to do with the high score, first of all, the score counter, we want to add a FSM here because we want to update, let's say, the score to the high score, which is set by the game, which is global. And this one's very easy. Let's call the FSM set high score. The state is set score. And what we want to do here is, first of all, um, convert int to string once again, because we already have an integer, which is the global high score. And we're going to make a string variable, a new one here. And then let's call it high score string. There we go. And then we said UI text set text. It's the same one again. And make sure it's below. And we just can use the owner because I'm now in the text here. And the text should be high score string. And this should already update automatically the high score if there is a new high score. And we will test this, of course, in the end. Good. Now we want to add a another UI element here, which is an image. And in the middle is fine. Let's make this the play button. And let's go to the building blocks. Um, let's drag in the play button here. Set native size. All right, it's a little bit big, isn't it? Of course, you could do it like this if you want, but we can, of course, scale it to 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Um, let's drag it up here a little bit, something like this. That it's in the middle is fine, actually. Um, that is good. And what we want to add here is button. So now it, it became a button. And what we want to do, the normal color is perhaps um yeah white this is fine the highlighted color should be a little bit grayish and the press color we can perhaps just make red or something there we go and now we want to add an fsm to control this and let's call this fsm play and let's call the state click and we have here one simple action which is called ui button uh, on click event. That's great. And let's add a transition finish. So event target UI button. This is a button because I added the element. And then I'm just going to finish. So once I click there, and I'm just going to add here a new state. Load game. Load, load scene. And you guessed it here, the scene index is one. And that's already done. But make sure that the indexes are right. Let's just duplicate this one. Just gonna drag it down. And I'm just gonna put here now the exit button. There, exit. And instead of loading scene one, I want to do quit application. Good. And the final thing which I want to add is the music, but also I just noticed that we should rename this to exit. So let's add the music and I noticed that I didn't import it. Uh, I got this from YouTube library. So this is free music. You can put any music you like. Just going to import it shortly. And what I'm just going to do is track this here. And it's all zeroed out. Let's focus on it. Oops. There we go. That's great. I'm just going to set the volume to 0 0.1. I don't want it to be bothered to be too loud. So that's good. And I don't want it to play on awake. I want it to loop though. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add here an FSM. And I'm just going to call this the music controller. 
because what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna play this music once and I have it playing even if you change the scenes back and forth, but I don't want it to restart again. So I'm just gonna set that up real short. And the first state is check if music is playing. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a float compare Float compare, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new float, and I'm going to make a, oops, a new global variable, and we call this music float, and I'm just going to compare it with zero. And if it's equal than zero, we're going to make a new event which is called play music, and if it's greater than zero, we're going to make a new event. It's called idle. And the idle one is very simple because it won't do anything. It's just here idle. And play music is a different one. It's called play music because here we will control the music. First of all, what we want to do is don't destroy on load. So this item will remain throughout the whole game unless stated otherwise but that's what don't destroy on load does. And what I want to do is set float value of the global music float. I'm just going to set it to one because next time I'm going to be in the main screen, it will want to play this music again, but then it will check the float and it sees, hey, it's uh, greater than zero. Let's go to idle so it won't play again. And here, of course, we do audio play. And also here, I'm just going to set the volume on 0 0.1. And I don't need any finish event or anything here. And by adding the final music, we pretty much finished the game. Let's go to build settings. And what we can do here is, of course, we can add a picture. Perhaps um, what we could do is just add this one here. That's pretty cool. And product name, Flappy Bird. Flappy bat, let's call it flappy bat, and make your name there. I'm just going to put my name there. Great. I'm just, uh, not sure if there's a save button. Sounds good. And what I'm just going to do, I'm just going to build it now. Make a new folder. Flappy bat. And once I build it, I can just start it up. And here we have our game. This is the final result. We have a nice background. We have a menu. If you press exit, it will quit. I'm just going to press play. And let's just test it. So I'm flying. All works fine. I'm getting points. Very nice. Okay, I die. And we can see the high score now changed to 3. And if we play again, and let's see if we can get a higher score. While my other self is trying to get a high score in the background, I just want to say some closing words here. Thank you very much for following along with the tutorial. Uh, I hope you learned a lot here and I think you can use all these mechanics for any kind of auto-scroller. So I will also perhaps make another game uh, in an auto-scroller form which uses similar mechanics just to show you what you can do with this setup as Flappy Bird is of course one game but the same concept can be used for uh, say 100 other games and if you like the video uh, please hit the like button and subscribe so it will help me out and will also keep me motivated to make some more videos and hopefully i will see you in the next one so cheers and you can see the high scores updated again and I can press exit and it quits the application you can upload it now to HIO I also did please check it out and that's it.